Good morning. Jesus is at a place where he believes he can get some rest. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. But he could not keep his presence secret. As soon as the Syrophoenician woman heard about him, she came and fell at his feet. This woman was a Gentile. And so what Jesus was saying was that he must first feed the Jews with spiritual food. But the woman showed sincere faith and belief in Jesus. She was not going to go away and be turned down easily. She had a great need. Her daughter was possessed by a demon. I would take a chance in saying that most likely Jesus was her only hope for the salvation of her little girl. This isn't the first time someone has to come to Jesus with a special request. But out of all the people who do this, this woman has the most against her. First, she is a woman. And many of the Jewish men of Jesus' day wouldn't even speak to a woman unless it was their wife or their mother. But this isn't just any woman. She's a non-Jewish woman, a Greek woman born in Syrian Phoenicia. Yet despite her strikes against her, she begs Jesus to deliver her daughter from a demonic spirit. This woman had faith. She believed that Jesus had the ability to cast out the unclean spirit from her daughter. In fact, in Jesus' day, he could have been killed as a teacher of the law for talking to a woman. And more importantly, a married woman since she had a daughter. But nothing or no one was going to stop her from getting the help she needed from Jesus. She wasn't going to let her gender or her ethnicity get in the way of her faith. She broke through the barriers of her culture. She was a Gentile. She was an alien to the Israeli people. She overcame the situation she was born into. She stepped out in faith to ask for healing for her daughter. And what she got by stepping out in faith was a wonderful blessing, a wonderful miracle. Jesus said to her, for saying that, you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So the woman obeyed Jesus, went home, and found her daughter lying on the bed. The demon was gone. But how does this apply to our lives today? We know that Jesus came to save us all. Greek, Jews, man, woman, slave, free. And remember, this story is out about a woman's faith. When your life seems to put a barrier in your way, when it seems like there's a wall between you and God, listen carefully to the faith of this Greek woman in a man's culture. She does not let anything get between her need and her Lord. There is nothing more powerful 
than Jesus. Amen. This woman was seeking relief. Her daughter was ill. And she was willing to do anything to save her baby. Her child was possessed with an evil spirit. Something or someone had possession of her little girl. And she is now alone in her plight. What should she do? There are children out here today in the same condition. Something or someone has taken possession of their minds. We see it every day. We just have to look at the television and see what's going on with our young ones today. Something has taken over the lives of some of our young people. Like the woman in our text, we need help. Imagine today a woman's daily struggle with her child. She is coping with a demonic possessed child. That means there are no, there are bouts of temper tantrums, acts of rage, she may not entertain much because of the conditions in her home. Doors in her house may be damaged from the stress of slamming and kicking. She herself could have scars from physically battling her child. Imagine her efforts in trying to get some help. She took the child for therapy and got a prescription for Prozac. That did not help. She took the child out of public school and placed the child into a private school. They tested the child and placed the child in special education classes for problem children. On frustration days, she could have sent her child to be with her grandparents. However, she learned that her child would sneak out of their house to be with some groups of kids in the neighborhood. It would seem that no matter what she tried, nothing could save her child from this cycle of self-destruction. What we must realize that no matter how hard we try to secure a future for our kids, Sometimes we are powerless. We can only pray that God will keep them safely in his care. Well, Jesus does reward this woman. She gets a blessing from the master's table because she got his attention. She wasn't too proud to beg or too stubborn to grovel. She needed help, and the Lord provided. And I don't know about you, but it is good to know that if you cry out for help, God will answer. If you're willing to call upon his name, he will be there. Jesus is available to serve the helpless in the face of social, religious, physical, psychological pressures surrounding us. There is no prejudice in his compassion. His love for humanity is colorblind. He saw a faith in this foreign woman that he had not seen among his own people. She got his attention. What was it about her faith that got his attention? What was it? How can we too get his attention and receive blessings? Jesus saw humility in this woman's faith. She did not come to Jesus with arrogance. It is certain that she knew 
who she was and what the Jews thought of her. Jesus said to her, first, let the children eat all they want, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. And by her response, Jesus saw that she had an active faith. She put her faith into action. This woman was willing to travel a distance to see Jesus. She knew that this Jewish rabbi could help her situation. Faith resulting in action is the only kind of faith that is real. If our faith does not lead us to act, my brothers and sisters, we are fooling ourselves. You see, faith is more than just believing in God and reflecting upon his word. Faith is living out our vocation and acting on our value and purpose in this world as Christians. In other words, for faith to work for us, we have to put our faith into action. If mountains will not move, be willing to climb the mountains. If waters will not part, be willing to forge the stormy sea. This is what the woman did. Then she went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Jesus did not just come to save the children of Israel, the natural descendants of Abraham. He came to save anyone who would believe. There are no foreigners in God's sight. God has compassion for all who are in need of him. We are to see Jesus in the face of every man, woman, and child. For God created every human being in his image to love and be loved. We must continually pray to God that we too, like Jesus, will be able to look past the prejudices of our culture and love everyone equally. Every one of every race, sex, nationality, and class is in need of the saving grace of Jesus. And let's face it, we live in a diverse community. My brothers and sisters, just look around you. Look around here in this sanctuary right now. A diverse community. That's how God created us. Too often, we go out of our way to avoid seeing the needs of others. We choose a different route to drive home so we don't have to see the homeless on the streets. We change the channel when we see pictures of horrible poverty or suffering in other nations. We explain suffering and poverty, trying to figure out ways to conclude that people who are suffering really got themselves into that situation. When we see poverty, we try to explain it in terms of people's laziness or lifestyle because it's far easier to fall asleep at night if we think they brought it upon themselves. But God doesn't call us to explanations. God calls us to compassion. God calls us to open our hearts to feel the plight of others, placing ourselves in their shoes. Like the friends who brought their friend to Jesus. So Jesus would have a chance to reach out his hand. One thing we can say about these friends, at the very beginning, they loved this deaf and mute man. They loved him enough to make a special effort 
to bring him to Jesus. They loved him enough to forget about their own welfare for a moment so that this man could experience the grace of God. They had a dream for their friend, a dream which said, if they could just bring him to Jesus, then Jesus would heal him. A dream where his life could enjoy the songs of God's creation, where he could speak to others in conversation. A dream where this man could no longer have to talk by signs, but he would understand everything and be understood. These friends had a vision, a dream for their friend of a different life, not life as it was, deaf, mute, but life as it could be as God's grace through Christ was brought to this man who couldn't hear or speak. They had to bring their friend to Jesus. They did. But what drove them to Jesus? How did they know? How did they know Jesus could heal their friend? How? How do you know that you're going to wake up in the morning? How do you know that you're going to get home safely after you leave this place? How do you know? Faith. My brothers and sisters, faith. That's what we need. We need to have faith. And the faith of these friends was passed on to this man, which allowed him to stand before Jesus with the sure confidence that Jesus would and could heal him. And as we look carefully at these friends, what did we learn from them for our own faith lives? And I think the major point for us, we, the church, the body of Christ are like those friends in the world today. We are the ones who reach out a hand to one suffering from brokenness of this world. We reach out with a hand of faith in the power of Jesus to overcome the world. We reach out a hand of tenderness, of kindness, of compassion, of healing to all those who are experiencing the burden of suffering of any form, be it death, sickness, broken relationships, whatever. We, the body of Christ, the church, are the friends for all those people in today's world. Friends who have come to know Christ, who have faith in Christ, who are willing to share that faith that others might come to believe. We are the ones who reach out a hand so that others might know the love of Christ. Imagine, imagine what must have gone through that deaf man's mind. First of all, he too had to believe and trust in what his friends were telling him. He had to go along with them as they took him to hear Jesus. The faith had been passed on. He believed, he believed, he believed that Jesus could heal him. Then Jesus beckons him to come to one side to be alone with him. And standing there in front of Jesus, the man could feel Jesus touch his ears, place the spittle on his tongue. Then looking at Jesus, he could see him look toward heaven. Then he said that funny word, a father. Then all sorts of sounds were invading his ears, voices, birds, 
Can you imagine hearing for the first time? Can you imagine how this man must have felt? The knowing that he could speak. What did he say? What do you think he said? He looked at Jesus. What was the word that he wanted to express? His gratitude and the overwhelming feelings inside him. What could he say? What would you say? I can imagine all he could do was beam as the tears streamed down his face. Then he saw one of his friends running toward him. And the next thing he knew, his friend was hugging him and saying to him, this is Jesus. He heard it. He heard the words. This is Jesus. Amen. Amen.